Hi, good morning. Um, as Ian kindly introduced, my name is Chris Grace, uh, and this presentation is on my work on Raptor Truss Stiffeners for Composite Skin Panels. <coughs> so first up, for what is Raptor, for anyone who doesn't know, Raptor is a fabrication technique for producing composite truss beams using continuous fiber. So you can see an example in the top right of the slide there. These beams are um, composed of longitudinal cord members for which we use uh, commercially available protruded com composite tubes. And these are connected through shear members, which are formed from wetted carbon fibre through an adaptive filament winding technique. So the current CNC winding machine is shown in the bottom there. You can see the uh, mandrel, which holds the longitudinal cord members and rotates. And you can see a, li a linear carriage, which holds the fibre and moves back and forth along the beam. So the linear carriage has multi-spooler on there, which allows us to change the shear, the amount of toe used for the shear web, and that holds a resin bath as well, which wets the fibre as we're, as we're winding. So we're creating these um, wet, wet structures. So there's been quite a bit of research uh, at the university on these uh, truss beams and seeing what they're capable of performing. The work that I've been doing is looking at um, advancing the applications of these structures by seeing what sort of potential they have as stiffening elements for, for composite panels. So stiffen panels are quite prevalent in industries which require lightweight structures that also need to have high stiffness and strength. So by um, moving the load to the um, stiffened elements, you can end up with a much thinner um, overall panel, such as in rib stiffened um, structures like airplane wings. But you also get sandwich panels as an alternative um, stiffened structure, which work through um, separating the skins with a central core material and increasing the skin bending resistance. So what we're doing is sort of seeing how, how fab wraps can be used as um, stiffening elements, both through the fabrication of amendments and also what sort of stiffness we can get through changing the design variables. So for this work, we're defining a unit cell. It's a square composite panel with a cruciform truss on it to allow us to scale up the work for um, grid sniffing at a later date. So initial experimental work, we've been looking at doing a three-point bend test to get some stiffness results for our panel. Um, for this, we have an external truss face, with, uh, external panel face with no truss on it. This is the side where the line load is applied. And this is parallel to two simply supported edges. And because we have the supports running through the trusses, we've had to do some amendments to the actual support roller. Um, as this passes through over a raised area, we've got some milling of the support roller with a resin bridge on the center, and this allows a, a continuous support along each edge. So we had two sample, two sample panels made with these trusses, and these were tested under cyclic loading to allow us to get some more results, using displacement controlled loading to try and um, increment displacement and, and prevent failure. So what we've got here is a force displacement graph for red lines are for the first test and blue for the second test. Although we did try and prevent failure through displacement control, we did, we did actually um, record audible failure, which you can see from the grouping of, second grouping of lines there that are dashed. Um, so stiffness has been calculated from the data that we've taken, around 300 newtons per millimetre. Um, we recorded around a maximum load of about one kilonewton, and after failure we're seeing about 70 to 80 percent drop, although we are still managing to take some load. So the results show that we can stick a truss to a panel and get some stiffness out of it and increase our, um, um, our load there. So we also want to see how this um, is in relation to alternative structures. So what we've done is a comparative analysis using a simple numerical model for sandwich panels, and we've compared a number of configurations with different core, mater uh, core materials, core thicknesses, and skin thicknesses, giving us around 4,000 potential sandwich panel configurations. Um, we've run this under a 200 newton lows, similar to the experimental setup, to see what sort of displacements we're getting. So what we see here is displacements against mass. Uh, displacements are put on a log scale due to the uh, number of large values, that, the large range of values. Um, and we've got red and blue crosses showing the two honeycomb core materials, both alum, um, aluminium and Nomex. And we've got the light blue and dark black squares for different density foam cores. So our result, our experimental result taken from the graph previous is shown there is the blue diamond. You can see we're in the same sort of range as um, sandwich panels used in the aer aerospace industry. For the next, for the sandwich panel configuration, which is the same mass, we're, they're actually showing an 82% increase in displacement. We can also kind of look at the same displacement offered from, uh, stiffness offered from a panel, but we're getting about 40% increase in, in the uh, mass. So there is a lot more work going on. Um, we're kind of using the experimental results to help develop our models and look at more realistic loading conditions. We're going to be um, improving the fabrication process to try and reduce that uh, to increase the strength. And we're looking at sort of look more complex structures such as grid stiffened, as I mentioned before, and also looking at potentially curved trusses using the current fabrication technique. 
Thank you for listening. I'm happy to answer any questions or talk to you at my poster.